You guys have been asking for some houseplant content and what I do with certain plants and how I kind of change them up and make them thrive. Today, hello, we're gonna make, no we're not, we're gonna mount a staghorn fern. So staghorn ferns, I don't know, I love them. They a lot of times actually grow up on trees and up higher in their native habitat. And as they're growing, they get these, they're called shelves or shelves on them and they protect them and help them, like usually they grow kind of at an angle in their natural habitat. So this shelf helps keep the leaves upright. Anyway, so when you mount it, kind of like you would mount, you know, I don't know, I guess antlers. I don't, I don't know, I don't do that. But um, you're kind of doing or replicating what it would do in its natural habitat. So to mount it, I'm using just what looks like a, you know, cut piece of wood. You can get this in any craft store, you can get it online. I just like the look of this. So there's really no, rhyme or reason to it. And to start, you wanna start usually with a plant that's in that, I'm gonna say six inch pot range. So I've had this one in here a while. I probably bought it in a four inch pot. And so on here, I'm gonna trace kind of like a rough circle. It's not a huge thing, but then this is just gonna help me place my, my nails in the right spots. So that gives me a circle. And then I'm gonna take some nails if you can find stainless steel ones, I would use those only because they won't rust. So as you're watering it, as it's in a human environment, it will keep better. So we're gonna put these, I'm gonna start by going across from each other so I know they're evenly placed. Which, I mean, you the nails, once you're done, are inconspicuous. You don't even know where they're at, so don't completely worry about that. So what we are doing, it seems weird here at first, but we're creating a natural, kind of habitat, but also we have to have a way that it's gonna stay on there. So these nails are gonna actually help kind of create the structure we need to hold that root ball on there. So, and then as you have all your nails in, I have one more here to put in. I usually put in around eight. It kind of just kind of evenly spaces it and you'll see here how it gives you better structure for your mounting. So we have our circle, we have our nails. Now we need our actual fern. It's been in this pot a long time, so it may be kind of difficult to get out. Oh, it's not too bad, okay. This is why I put paper down, as you can see. It just makes it easy, and you don't care as much. So I'm gonna start by taking off some of this bottom root ball. Don't freak out, you've seen me take plants apart, you've seen me do things, it's not a big deal. We're just gonna do this because, obviously, we need to get this to have right here. And so I kind of wanted to see how much space I have to work with. You can even take off some of the roots if you need to. That's what I'm doing. That is gonna be actually just about perfect. So what I'm gonna do now, you can kind of see, you have a lot of room here outside the hole. I'm gonna put a little bit of this extra dirt, kind of just around it a little bit, just to make sure that it's gonna have, this is what's gonna hold moisture. So you wanna put some of the dirt around it and just make sure it's gonna have good moisture retention here. This is obviously a dirty process, so if you don't wanna do it inside, do it outside. Once you have that dirt around there, you're gonna think, is that enough dirt? For staghorns, they don't need a huge amount of pot. They actually like when you have them in a pot to be in somewhat tight or constricted areas. Their roots don't wanna necessarily have way too much room. So this is okay for them. And now that I have their dirt around them, I have here some sheet moss. Sheet moss just means that it comes in bigger pieces, and I have it soaking in water. You can see, oh yeah, there it is. It has some of that colorant on it. I like that for one, because it starts with a really nice moist environment that way. And what I'm gonna do is just build up all these edges with the moss. So that's gonna kinda, one, it's gonna hold in the dirt, because obviously we could not hang it as is. And it's gonna give it that perfect environment that's gonna help hold the moisture in, and also, let's be honest, it just, it looks good. It, it looks good. I like the moss. I just think it looks nice. I haven't actually seen these growing in their natural habitat. I mean, I talk about it like I have. I haven't. But this is how I envision them kind of growing in amongst the moss and just very fairy tale, right? And this is how they grow now in Iowa too. <laughs> so as we're doing this, you just wanna make sure you have all that dirt covered and then you also just always wanna feel where your roots are. I mean, not your roots, your nails. 
because we're gonna use those here pretty soon, which I know you're like, yeah, what's going on with the nails here? So I think I have it all covered and it will be dirty for a little bit. We'll have to wash it off, you know, but a little bit more maybe over here. So now, how are we gonna keep the moss there? It's a good question, guys. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna use fish line. So just like that plastic fishing line, this is a 12 pound, which just means how much weight it holds, which I always put that tape there on the end. So I can find the end, because the stuff just disappears. So I'm gonna take off a pretty decent chunk, probably even use maybe more than that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with one nail. We're gonna, that's why you wanna nail with a head, so you can do this. We're gonna actually just tie a knot around it, right up to that nail. And I'm gonna double knot it just because sometimes this fish line, it's good to do like a box knot on it because it holds it better. And yes, I think I know what a box knot is. I'm gonna do it one more time just to be safe because this is now the beginning. I think you're gonna get it now. Now we're gonna weave. That's, so we're gonna go to all those nails and we're just gonna keep crisscrossing. We're gonna keep just kind of going along. I like to go opposites pretty much to start. So we go opposite. I twist it around that next nail, not like overly tight because you'll just break the line, but somewhat tight. And then come now across caddy corner because this is now gonna start helping it hold in. Now, if you have defined shelves, just because this was a pretty old plant, so I already have those, I'm going under those because I wanna make sure to keep those out and not constrict them. So I'm gonna go around this nail. This would actually be something fun to do with kids. It seems a little hard, but you could give them a, a smaller one to start with, maybe even a four inch. And then it has more, a little bit smaller area for them to work with and it's not quite so cumbersome as this one can be. Look, as I'm going across, it's holding in that moss. So it's creating the structure it needs and the safety it needs really to stay on there. It's honestly pretty simple. And it's just kind of one of those fun things to do because most likely not too many people you know are probably just gonna have a nice mounted steak horn. So I always think it's just kind of a fun thing to have around because it's different and it's fun. And they love, if you live in a humid area, oh my goodness, put them outside in the summer. They absolutely love that. So how do you know when you've done enough? I try to make every crisscross pattern I can, kind of imagine you're doing like a weird star pattern. You want to know that it's going to hold. So I haven't tied it off yet, just so I can show you. Like there's no give when I'm holding this up. It's very tight. That's also why you want to use a plastic fish line like this, because something that's natural like a jute or you know a rope like that, it's going to degrade over time with the water. So on this last one, we're going to do pretty much what we did on the others. I'm going to twist it around a few times as you can see, it can be a little tedious here at the end. Okay, then I'm gonna try to take this, take it through a loop on the one of the last ones, you know, and just tie it off. Which I know kind of is probably like, seriously, Kayla. This is just the one little, like if this is the hard part, you guys, it's still really fun. So we're gonna just tie it off and I'll probably double it again just because Makes me feel better. When you're done, you have this really cool, fun piece. I don't think all your friends are gonna have these. It's a mounted stay horn, how fun. Now you can do it. I better see pictures of yours. Share it around, tell everyone how easy this is. It's a fun project to do. <sighs> stay horns are just gonna be sold out everywhere, I know it. Okay, keep asking me questions, keep telling me what you wanna see, it's fun to know. I'm gonna go do unmounting things and just go work on watering my plants because it's hot, so I can't wait.